It's one of the most colourful science fiction movies you'll ever see, with the rip-roaring soundtrack by the rock group Queen. By the end of it, you really will be saying, go Flash, go, because yes, we're talking about Flash Gordon, and this is Sign 5. The history of Flash Gordon has been well documented over the decades. Created by Alex Raymond as a King Features Syndicate comic strip in 1934 as direct competition to Buck Rogers, the story was inspired by the 1933 novel When Worlds Collide, which saw humans travelling to another world in a rocket ship as it approached the Earth. Naturally, it wasn't long before Flash made the first of his three on-screen appearances, starting with the famous Buster Crab serials commencing in 1936. From here, Flash returned, this time on TV in a new series made in the mid-1950s. Needless to say, once the sci-fi film blockbuster revolution took hold in the late 1970s, it was no surprise that Flash Gordon would make his way onto the cinema screen as a passion project for Dino De Laurentiis. Despite having a very basic plot and stereotypical good versus evil characters, where the film succeeds is in its execution, whereby Flash, Dale and Zarkov are propelled into a situation they aren't prepared for. Yet because they're from Earth, and therefore by default are far cooler and hip than anyone else in Mongo, they're able to not only topple Ming's tyrannical regime, but unite all the kingdoms into one big happy family. At face value, there really isn't that much of the story. So why is the film held in such high esteem by its devoted fanbase? One explanation could be its gorgeous colour palette, which was directly inspired by the comic strip, whereby the greens, reds, pinks, golds and even the blacks absolutely glisten on the screen. One of the more ingenious concepts of the film is the idea of using different coloured blood to represent the various humanoid species. The problem is that some of them actually don't match up. For example, Prince Baron has red blood, while the rest of his fellow Arboreans have green. Princess Aura also has red blood, yet Ming the Merciless has green and he's her father. Go figure that one. From a production standpoint, having different coloured blood ensures the film won't be upsetting to a younger audience whilst proving that even the human-looking bipeds in the film aren't actually human. Yet there's one aspect of the film which clearly sets it apart from its contemporaries, and that's its heightened level of sexuality, which, bar a couple of exceptions, was very uncommon for Hollywood science fiction films at the time. Whether it be the exotic and sensual Princess Aura, the elaborate Mongo gowns Dale is forced to wear, or even the appearance of Ming's harem, the film's European heritage where sex is to be celebrated is on full display. Alongside this, of course, is the hunk hero image that Flash himself projects. Yet there is one aspect of the film everyone will be familiar with, and that's the outstanding opening title sequence, which eloquently captures the history of the Flash Gordon comic series by showcasing Alex Raymond's famous images, accompanied by a fantastic musical number by Queen. Ultimately, it really is the perfect way to start what is a spectacular film. From an in-universe political structure point of view, it's interesting to note that the kingdoms of Mongo are all hyper-aggressive towards each other. As Aura states in the film, this is intentionally fueled by Ming to keep them distracted and to ensure his own power base isn't threatened by the collective group. With that in mind, a key question to ask is whether the angst between the kingdoms is racially motivated or religious, remembering that at least two different godlike deities are mentioned in the film. Taking this thought process one step further, you have to wonder if any kingdom has successfully invaded and completely conquered another. Or do Ming's forces then step in to ensure this doesn't happen, thereby ensuring that a balance of power remains throughout all of Mongo? With this in mind, it's noted in the film that the Hawkmen are planning to eventually attack Ming's stronghold to depose him, which in itself could open up an interesting hypothesis as to whether the attack could ever be successful. Remembering that in the film, the surprise attack only worked due to the death of Clytus, the capture of the ship Ajax, and the distraction of Ming's wedding. After the climactic battle has concluded, Flash, Dale and Zarkov are given the opportunity to stay in Mongo. As Flash and Dale are now engaged, it's hinted that they'll return to Earth, while it's safe to assume Zarkov will remain behind. This then presents an interesting scenario, as Flash and Dale will be the only two people in the world who know that aliens and extraterrestrials actually do exist. And finally, it's worth noting that a wonderful companion piece of the film was produced in 2017 called Life After Flash. This documentary not only discusses the history of the film's production, but is a definite must-watch for any Flash Gordon fan. In the end, Flash Gordon is just a fun movie to watch. It's full of vibrant colours, great one-dimensional characters and a fantastic soundtrack. So while you plan your next holiday to Scythera, be sure to join us again for another Sci-Fi Spective.